Hello everyone, this will be the first of possibly many on a series of games that I have played as an adult because my parents wouldn't let me touch them as a kid. I wasn't allowed to play M games until I was 14. Anyway, now that I'm officially a boomer at the ripe old age of 25 and my brain is finally developed past the neuron activation stage, I feel as though I'm finally mentally fit enough to articulate my thoughts about the games that should have defined my childhood. But we'll talk about Razor Scooter Downhill and the Rugrats in Paris PS1 game in another video. Resident Evil 4 is the best game in the franchise, hands down. And that might sound like a loaded statement, but we're going to be talking about a game that revolutionized the third-person shooter genre with its over-the-shoulder camera that many, including myself, argue have yet to be matched by any of its successors. Resident Evil 4 is a game in which you play as early 2000s teen heartthrob Aaron Carter. Aaron desperately wants the world's best candy and is willing to travel to a remote village somewhere in Romani, Austria, Spain to track it down. On the helicopter ride, Special Agent Carter is recruited by the U.S. government to locate and exfiltrate Dakota Fanning, who after starring in a film that depicted her emotional bond with an arachnid, has been taken hostage by some individuals whose culture sees camaraderie with beings in possession of more than four legs to be a mortal sin. Along the way, you'll meet a cast of colorful characters and then systematically remove their colorful insides. There is Man in Creepy Robe, Luis, who doesn't get disemboweled by you, Salazar, a gnome-like, time-bending, short-man complex amalgamation of Lord Farquaad, Napoleon Bonaparte, and Baby Grinch. The merchant, who says funny thing that you've definitely never heard before. Ashley. <coughs> Leon! Help! Help me, Leon! Help! Leon! And a host of other characters. Gameplay. In this game, you play as a man with no multitasking ability to speak of. The simple act of turning is impossible to pull off while in motion. Aaron must stop, and then use the left stick to rotate their character. The same applies for shooting. When aiming and firing a weapon, the synaptic nerve associated with leg motor function becomes disabled when a gun is in the ready-to-go-bang position. This is, however, an intentional choice as the enemies are slow and deliberate with their attacks, giving the player the ability to move out of the way long before most attacks connect. Along with being an international pop star and secret agent, Mr. Carter has also trained diligently in, in every martial art known to man. Aaron is able to perform roundhouse kicks that could knock the head off of NBA players to a German suplex that explodes the skull completely, and a revolutionary for the time idea by shooting the natives in their extremities, their skulls, or their patellas. Leon is awarded the opportunity to do a short-range melee contextual attack. This attack gives the player iframes and generally clears the immediate vicinity of other zombies as well. On lower difficulties, you could get through the game, never using this feature, due to being flush with ammo. On professional, Aaron needs to be in judo competition shape to contend with the repeated muscle damage of whipping roundhouse kicks at 300 miles per hour. Aaron can obtain a number of pistols, shotguns, rifles, explosives, and other death-dealing, leg paralysis-inducing armaments. Leon stores these arms in a very light and transportable attaché case, RE4's version of a grid-based inventory system. This case that magically follows Leon around limits your carrying capacity, but still allows by the endgame for Leon to carry multiple handguns, shotguns, rocket launchers, and rifles, as well as hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Maybe kids these days are so lazy because they aren't carrying a 300-pound arsenal on their backs. That and the avocado toast that is robbing them of their ability to buy property. Presentation. RE4, in my opinion, has not aged gracefully on modern resolutions. 
Playing RE4 on a color-banded CRT back in 2004 allowed for the mind to fill the detail for you on modern 4K displays. The textures look like an artist's rendition of a Play-Doh world. These now muddy-looking textures were more than enough to get the point across back in the day, but don't hold up to scrutiny now. For that, everyone should check out the RE4 HD project. It's what I've been using for the footage and the recording in this video. A dedicated Chad gamer spent 10 years of his life compiling 4K textures from locations across the world, going as far as to go to some of the places the devs did and take pictures using his own camera. As a result, the game can look good for all of the idiots out there who judge a game solely by its graphics. My most recent playthrough of this game happened on a 30-inch color track CRT via my PS2 that I've had for 15 years that still works. RE4 very well may be the best game of the PS2 and GameCube era. As much of a hotly debated topic as that is, that's why I could absolutely see the writing on the wall with RE2 and 3 Remake that for sure they would take one of my favorite games of all time and their most well-reviewed and give it the remake that nobody asked for. I mean, I didn't ask for it. I hope more people weren't asking for it. From what I understand, the devs have strongly implied that players who have issues with controls will get to experience Resident Evil 4 as more of a modern experience. And if you are like me, that is sending up a ton of red flags. It is all but confirmed that tank controls will be removed from RE4 Remake, and with the removal of tank controls comes a complete rebalance of the way combat works. In the original game, Leon is slow and clunky to control, this much is indisputable, but having recently played Tenshu on the PS1, RE4 controls like butter comparatively. But to counteract this, the devs have also made enemies slow. They lurch forward slowly, they throw slow-moving projectiles, all to compensate for the fact that Leon moves like a refrigerator on legs. And in my opinion, what makes RE4 so special even today is that blending of old and new convention for RE4 creates this extremely unique paced gameplay loop that comes alive, especially on harder difficulties. Because ammo is limited on professional, the player must take much greater use of the melee mechanic. By removing the tank controls, I'm afraid that the nuance of the combat loop of RE4 might very well be lost in translation. If they are going to modernize one of the best video games of all time, they have to fully commit and not make any half measures. If it's going to be modern, make it modern, but make it consistent. I do not think there is any way in which I would enjoy the remake quite as much as the original, because while RE4 is a classic, I'm somewhat afraid that the remake will be boiled down to nothing more than a modern day zombie shooter that is somewhat forgettable in an oversaturated genre, as opposed to being genre defining. I hope they fully commit to the modernization aspect of their design, whether that be cracking the enemies the fuck out, or increasing their numbers, or some combination of both. If you've watched all the way, I implore you to go off and play RE4. You can get it for $5 on Steam frequently, and it's one of the best games ever made. Right now is absolutely the perfect time to play RE4, because even if you play an hour of the first game, it'll give you a much greater appreciation for the remake when it comes out. Locations in RE4 are seared into my brain, and I am excited but also trepidatious about the remake.